blessing to be here. Um, really, Spa is the city of Kabbalah, and when we're living living in Spa, we're actually in tune to that deeper essence of reality. What is Kabbalah is the existential truth of reality, the building blocks of creations. So our physical senses, our physical beings only see the external layers of reality. But living in Spa, we really are living from that place that everything has a soul. Everything is an expression of one unified field of godly energy. Mm-hmm. And while learning through learning Kabbalah and specifically learning in Spa, we're really able to peel away those levels of concealment to really see the reality and see the truth of reality for what it is. Mm. Really a very big blessing to be here. And um, there are very many righteous women here in Spa today uh, and all over the world learning, um, really learning mystical Torah and learning Kabbalah. Right. Well, also and beautiful because, you know, we know throughout history that it was always like in Kabbalah, the men were only able to study it when they turned 40. And you have a very special man as a husband who has uh, always embraced your divine feminine and, and sharing in this knowledge. And you both have, have grown together and you do so much through livekabbalah.com and, and the school that you're able to provide. You know, tell us about that and kind of, uh, you know, what you have, uh, you know, in store for the next year. Um, so I think in general, the world has really shifted in terms of learning Kabbalah. Well, you said it used to be something that only men would learn and maybe at the age of 40. But actually, the Lubav Rebbe actually said in the year 1992 that through our work in these 5,000 years of exile, we've actually, and bringing godly consciousness into the world and through learning Torah, which is God's infinite wisdom and performing his commandments, his mitzvot, which is God's infinite will for the world, we've actually refined and elevated the actual fabric of creation. And therefore, what I see in Liv Kabbalah is that the entire world is much more receptive to these teachings right now, specifically in this juncture of cosmic history. Mm-hmm. And the result, said that now is the time we have to spread these teaching to the masses because it connects us to the Eitz HaChayim, the tree of life. And we see how much darkness there is in the world and how much we need these teachings. Right. Especially now because we know in this kind of this process, all the sages have said the messianic process is extreme polarization, darkness, confusion. The only way the light could come in, you know, you have a dark room, all you got to do is light a match and, and there's light even if it's not the light of the studio, for example. So why is also this such an important cosmic time in history? It's a critical juncture in the world, and we're seeing it in Israel every day. There's a lot of tension, but we also know there's a lot of light. Absolutely. And I think it's so important as women to really connect to these teachings with the power that we have of women. As the Arizal says, that right before Mashiach, there's the rise of the feminine energies in the world. Mm. And it said that through righteous women, women were redeemed from Egypt, and through righteous women, we're going to be redeemed in the future redemption. And um, the Arizal also says that this generation, we are reincarnations of the souls of that came out of, of um, Egypt. So it's so vital in our generation, specifically as women, to be learning this mystical dimension of the Torah. Wow. And... Um, Specifically, Kabbalah is actually feminine in its essence. Mm-hmm. So they are feminine and masculine, we think of as genders, but they're actually energies, spiritual energies that make up the very fundamental core energies of the world. The feminine energies are called the mashpia. The I'm sorry, the masculine energies are called the mashpia, the contributor or the giver. And the feminine energies are called the makabel, which is the receiver. So in the dynamic of that relationship, the male gives the seed, he contributes the seed, and the woman receives that seed and creates something infinitely greater. She receives the seed and creates new life. Now, please understand, I'm very limited on my commentary on this platform for obvious reasons, but God willing, I'm going to redo this over on Rumble, BitChute, and go over this thoroughly because this is very dangerous. Wow. And really fascinating, Kabbalah means to receive. So the energy of Kabbalah is actually a very feminine energy. And that's why specifically at this juncture in history where the feminine energies are rising in the world, it's so important for us to learn Kabbalah, but learn it really from the feminine perspective that learning Kabbalah in our generation, in this time in cosmic history, is not just learning about it in an esoteric way, but it's actually learning it in a way that we receive the information, we expand upon it, we embody these concepts, we integrate it into our everyday lives to influence the way we connect to God, to ourselves, to ourselves emotionally, in our relationships, in our business dealings, and um, 
to the way we wow. relate, relate to the entire world. So that's it's why really also, cool. yeah, Bina, Malchut, those are feminine, those are feminine energies. And even your husband has said, like the bride, they talk about the Shabbat, the bride in the, in the Zohar, the bride is the female and that needs to go up to meet the, that energy, right? It's like a, a marriage of masculine and feminine to bring a new, a new age, right? And to bring a new, a new age, right? Exactly. So specifically when we actually learn these teachings, um, and we receive them and we integrate them. And that's what we do in Live Kabbalah. It's actually called Live Kabbalah because it's not just receiving the teachings and just in a passive way, but it's actually living with it, integrating mm -hmm. it. And that brings so much light in this darkness, so vital in this time, as the Arizal says, it's, it really connects us to the tree of life, the Eitz HaChayim, so vital in this dark world. And um, yeah, and it's so Keep powerful. Shining, it's girl. Really yeah. Keep shining, Miriam. Well, Thank you so much. I wish we could go on and on, but I'll, I'll see you in spot soon. All right. Thank you so much, Emily. <laughs> Thanks. This is a subject that definitely needs to be expounded upon. Uh, this is, to me, the most dangerous thing when it pertains to spiritual warfare. It is very cunning. So, like I said, if I do wind up putting something over on BitChute or Rumble, I will do my best to let you know. The link to this video, unedited, is right below. And God bless each and every one of you. I truly mean it. Peace and grace to you. Benny Fesh. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God.